Hi folks, in this video, we're gonna be practicing conditional proofs by doing the biconditional tautology. So pause your videos now and see if you can solve this proof. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. Hopefully you noticed that the conclusion here is a biconditional, and so you should not do a reductio. If you try to reductio, you need to go back to the previous videos where we say, anytime your conclusion is a conditional, a conditional or a biconditional, you should sketch out conditional intro proofs. So here, what we should have done is planned out two subproofs, one going from left to right, and then the other one going from right to left. In a sense, we have two new jobs. Just view this as its own independent proof now, get that one done, and then do this little proof. And once we've done those two things, we know we get our conclusion by biconditional intro. So if you try to reductio, you're still in the Boolean mindset too much. If you have a tautology that's made up entirely of Boolean connectives, reductio is the only thing you can do. But now that we have conditionals, if it's a wide scope arrow claim, doing conditional proof is always gonna be the easiest approach. Okay, so I have in my mental space two proofs sketched out like this. If you didn't get this far, now pause your videos and see if you can finish these off. Okay, in either case, we're gonna start talking about the answers now. So what I'm trying to do is now get from P arrow Q arrow R to P and Q arrow R. You might've made a mistake in assuming P next. That is not the right approach because when you notice you have an arrow, an arrow premise up here and you think, okay, if I only had P, then I could do some arrow elim. But don't do that. Whenever you have an arrow premise, you should create a mental list in your head and say, okay, I need P, but don't just assume it. I have to wait for it to make its appearance. And once P makes an appearance in this proof, then I'll know what to do because, because then I'll do arrow elim with it but something else tells me what to do next. It's not this premise. This premise tells me to wait. What tells me to do something next is this thing, my arrow and my conclusion. If you didn't realize you should assume P and Q, then you're still not listening to the plan enough. The plan from the previous videos is anytime you have an arrow conclusion, the easiest approach is to assume the antecedent and try to get to the consequent. So I know R is my new goal down here. Now that I, now that I have this sketched out, I finally, I can't keep using the same strategy. R does not have an arrow in it, so I can't plan another arrow intro proof. But luckily, see the nice thing about doing these arrow intro proofs is I get all these premises to work with from all my temporary assumptions. So I've got some more information. I can just use my Boolean ideas. I, can, I have a conjunction, so I'm gonna bring down each conjunct. And notice what you, when you do that, look. P, I've been waiting for you. I, I've got this arrow claim up here and I've been waiting all along for P to make an appearance. Once it does so, I know exactly what to do. I'm gonna do arrow elim and I get Q arrow R. And now, see at a certain point, you just have to start noticing these commonalities of patterns. Of course, these two allow me to do arrow elim again. So that's how I finish off the first half of that proof. All right, if you didn't get through the second one, here's your last chance to pause your videos before we keep going. So. So if that fills in enough gaps for you and you can do the rest of the proof now that you couldn't have done previously, stop your videos now and see if you can finish it off. Okay, let's talk about how to do it. Again, don't assume P conjunction Q. If you did that down here, like we did up there, that's a trap. I, I'm waiting for P and Q to come along. I am not going to assume it. Instead, I'm going to assume P in this one. Oh, oh, I forgot. I didn't give you that justification yet. Okay, now here we are, I assume P because my goal is an arrow and I want to assume the antecedent and try to get to the consequent. So what do I do next? I assume Q because I have sketched out in my head here, Q arrow R is my goal down here. That's what told me to assume Q. And now I'm trying to get to R. Now that I've got P and I've got Q, eventually this is where I just have to notice, okay, wait, I can build P and Q. That's the, thing that, that's the thing that I've been thinking about all along. How do I get P and Q so I can do arrow elim on that thing? So once I get P and Q put together, now I can finally get R that way. Now that I've assumed Q and gotten to R, that allows me to introduce Q arrow R. How did, you know, how did I know this was my rule? Because I've been planning it out all along. That's why I assumed Q in the first place. Anytime you start a subproof with a new assumption, you must know how you are going to end that subproof. Never start a subproof without a reason. I started this subproof precisely because I knew my, my goal was Q arrow R and I was gonna get from Q to R. And that's the exact same reason why I started with P on line nine, because I knew I needed to get to Q arrow R to do arrow intro. And again, 
That's the same reason why I started this thing on line one and this on line eight, because I had planned out a biconditional intro proof from the start. So it's because I knew what I was doing when I started those subproofs that the justification for all of these final lines just falls right into place. So this was a complicated proof of a biconditional tautology, and it hopefully is reinforcing the lesson, pay attention to those conclusions. And anytime your conclusion is an arrow proof or a biconditional proof, you know exactly what to do. Start those subproofs and, and work it out from, from the back. Okay, thanks.